Tension between the Indiana General Assembly and the state's leading post-secondary institutions is nothing new. Oh sure, lawmakers have long enjoyed celebrating sports championships and over the years, they've adopted countless resolutions recognizing the achievements of students, faculty, and staff. Those accolades, however, often have been overshadowed by broad-based suspicion, misunderstanding, and thinly veiled animosity, and on occasion that animosity has given way to full-blown acrimony. One such Donnybrook erupted in 1946 when three members of Indiana University's law school faculty signed a letter encouraging the State Board of Elections to include the Communist Party on an upcoming election ballot. A decade later, hundreds of IU students wore and distributed green feathers to protest efforts to cleanse the state's public schools of any book mentioning Robin Hood, ostensibly for fear that the characters steal from the rich to give to the poor antics promoted communism. And in the late 1960s, Purdue University's administration attributed reductions in state higher ed funding to lawmakers' dissatisfaction with students' growing opposition to racial repression, gender stereotyping, and U.S. involvement in Vietnam. Some disputes have spanned decades, as evidenced by the General Assembly's long-running battle against IU's renowned Kinsey Institute. Last year, after complaining for more than 70 years about Kinsey's exploration of human sexuality, Conservative lawmakers succeeded in shutting off all state funding for the Institute. This year, the cause of uproar is Senate Bill 202, which would require Indiana's public universities and their faculties to accommodate, quote, intellectual diversity. Supporters of the bill, now awaiting action by Governor Eric Holcomb, say the measure will allow conservatives to feel more comfortable on campus. Critics, including most, if not all, of the state's student groups and faculty organizations, condemn the legislation as a short-sighted, heavy-handed attempt to upend academic freedom and promote intellectually tenuous beliefs. Whether SB 202 actually protects intellectual diversity is yet to be determined, but one thing is certain. This Hoosier tradition of debating what should and shouldn't take place on our college campuses is likely to continue for years, if not decades, to come.